I'm Jody Houghton, and I'm at Calvary Bible Church in Greg, and we're having bound. I see a city. I see my home. I see my blessed. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. On behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I am Doug Benedict, and along with Pastor Jim Jenkins, who will be joining us just a little bit later on. We are just so excited that you're joining us once again for another great episode of Heaven Bound. And we do hope that you get a blessing out of the great Southern gospel music, as well as the great preaching from God's Word by Pastor Jim Jenkins. And if this is your first time joining us, welcome to the show. A little history about the church. We are brought to you by Calvary Bible Church. Calvary Bible Church is a small congregation located in Gregg, New York. You can find us at 6968 Sweeney Road in Gregg, New York. The GPS will get you just about here, but you will have to pay a little attention as you're turning onto Sweeney Road. But if you want to come, you can follow these super easy directions. Coming out of Lowellville, head south on Route 12 and make a left-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. Coming out of Boonville, head north on Route 12 and make a right-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. Coming out of West Leiden, head north on 26. Keep straight onto 12D, head north on Route 12, and make a right-hand turn onto Burdick's Crossing Road. Take Burdick's Crossing Road all the way to the end. Make a left-hand turn onto Greg Road. Head up the hill, and the first right-hand turn is going to be Sweeney Road. And we are up there about 200 yards on the right-hand side. Now, if you want to come but you don't have a ride, give us a call this morning. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271. Or you can send an email to cbclewiscounty at gmail.com and we'll line someone up to come pick you up. There's people from all over the area that attend here, so there's probably someone right near you that would just love to come give you a ride. But now all else fails, and don't use this as an excuse not to come because you'll miss out on so much. We do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com as well as on Livestream.com and Facebook.com. So there's plenty of ways that you can come check us out and attend the services no matter where you are. But with this being the second Sunday of the month, we'll begin our services this morning at 9 o'clock for our fellowship breakfast. Then at 9.30, we'll have Sunday school. At 10.30, we'll have our morning service, and we'll be out of here by noon. And then 6 o'clock tonight, we'll have our evening service. And then Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we will have our midweek prayer and Bible study service. Some other things that you might want to throw on your calendar. March 23rd, we're going to try something a little different. It's a Friday night, and we're going to host a movie night. We're going to be watching the movie Flywheel. So if you've never seen it, or if you just want to get out and have a free movie, we're even going to provide popcorn. What kind of a deal is that? Come spend some time with us, watch a movie, and get blessed by a great movie. Again, that's going to be March 23rd at 7 o'clock. And then March 18th, which is the Sunday right before that, we're going to have Rudy Holland here with us. He's going to be the guest speaker that day, and I'm sure he's going to bring something great for us. And then March 26th, which is the Monday after the movie night, It'll run 26th through the 29th. It'll be a Monday through Thursday. Brother Dewey Williams will be here from Tennessee, and he is just an awesome, down-to-earth, southern evangelist. I'm sure if you come, you'll enjoy him. Those services will begin every night, beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. And then don't forget April 1st, which is the Sunday after. We'll have Easter Sunday here at Calvary Bible Church. So as if we didn't have enough services for you before, there's lots of times to come check us out. So pick one of those times, and we'll be looking just for you 
and we can't wait to meet you. Now, reading through the Bible, you come across lots of characters that just would be considered despicable in our eyes for multiple reasons. One man had a job that put him on the very bottom rung of the social ladder. And Jesus took the time to meet with him. And after that meeting, this man made a tremendous change. So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 19, beginning in verse 1. And as you're turning, let's listen to Mike Blanton and Evidence as they sing, He Didn't Throw the Clay Away. Empty and broken, I came to him, a vessel unworthy and so scarred with sin. But he did not despair, he started over again, and I the day he didn't throw the clay away Evidence with Mike Blanton singing a really good song. And it's been a long time since I've heard that song. He didn't, did not throw, he didn't throw the clay away. One of the objections people have say, well, I could never come to your church or I could never be a Christian because I can't do all that stuff far as being a Christian, and I just tell you, neither can the preacher. He can't do it either. It is impossible. People say, I messed up so many times, preacher. I just have made so many mistakes in my life. What use would Jesus have with me? And the answer to that is, look, 
he doesn't throw the clay away. I heard someone say this, I believe it was Charles Stanley said this, that it's not until we realize that we are failures and that's all we'll ever be is failures before God, that's when God can begin to use us, to realize that we have failed and that there really isn't any hope. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus is on his way to, to Jerusalem and he has to go through Jericho. Now, Jesus has been through Jericho several times, but he is now passing through Jericho, and there was a man there who really, when he looked at his life, and the circumstances of his life, realized that he was a failure, realized that he had messed up. So what did Jesus do? Most people think, well, he threw him under the bus. No, I didn't. We can find many examples. There are a lot of examples in the New Testament. The woman taken in the very act of adultery. Now that, my friend, was a setup job by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they wanted Jesus to either A, condemn her to stoning, or B, just send her away and say, leave her alone. In either case, the Pharisees, Sadducees, that whole religious crowd would have then accused Jesus either, either A, breaking the Mosaic law, or B, inciting a riot in the Temple Mount. Either way, they figured they had him. But Jesus, you know, being Jesus, he stooped down, wrote the sand, and stood up, let, said, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. Stooped down again, began to write the sand again. And they, from the oldest to the youngest, began to leave one by one. Now, I'm not sure what Jesus wrote in the sand. I, I wrote, somebody said, well, maybe he wrote something from the Mosaic Law, which condemned them. Maybe. He had said, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. I, someone said to me once, well, maybe he was writing their names down. Maybe. But anyway, here's this woman. Jesus stands back up and says, woman, where are thine accusers? She said, no man condemns me, Lord. And here's the tremendous, here's the great thing. Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. The woman that had an issue of blood in Mark chapter five, she said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I know that I'd be made whole. And she came, touched, and Jesus knew virtue had gone out of him, said, who touched me? The disciples said, what do you mean who touched you? Look at all these people. And she came trembling. He said, that faith, Jesus said to her, that faith hath made thee whole. See, people get the idea that I've got to live some kind of a perfect life as a Christian, and I just can't do that. It's impossible for me to do that. And you're right. It is. It's next to impossible. You can't do it without Christ. As I started to say in Luke chapter 19, Jesus passing through Jericho, and he has a strange encounter with a little guy, and his name was Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus, the Bible says, was small of stature. And so as Jesus passed by, he climbed up into a sycamore tree. I've got three sycamore trees growing in my yard, and uh, they grow really fast. They're very limmy, so that it would not have been hard for, Nick, for Zacchaeus, not Nicodemus, but Zacchaeus, to climb up into the tree. And as Jesus passed by, he looks up in the tree, and there's Zacchaeus. Now, you need to know this about Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector. Uh, the Jews put them at the bottom of the social ladder. They had a separate group. They were a separate group of sinners, according to the Jews. The publicans and the sinners. The publicans were the guys that collected the tax. I mean, they were in a group all by themselves. They weren't just sinners. They were publicans, not Republicans, just publicans. They were tax collectors. They were the as low on the social ladder that you could possibly be in Jewish society. One of the things that 
they accuse Jesus of is that he eats with the publicans and sinners. So you see, the publicans were grouped. They were worse than sinners. They were the publicans. You didn't get any lower than that group of people. So Jesus was passing by, and he looks up in the tree. And there's Zacchaeus up in the tree looking down at him. And he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down for today. Salvation has come to thy house. So Zacchaeus climbs down out of the tree and follows Jesus. Or Jesus follows him to his house. Now, they were known. Look, all Rome cared about was if you got what was theirs. After that, you'd get whatever you wanted. And that's why the people hated them so bad. I mean, they were extortionist. They got Rome's tax, but then to get paid, they charged the people, and the people hated them. But Jesus is going to his house? I mean, come on, give me a break. Jesus is going to Zacchaeus' house? Absolutely. That song that we sing in church, Jesus, what a friend of sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. So Zacchaeus climbs down, and he goes home, and really what happened at the house, it doesn't really say, but he made haste, the Bible says in chapter 19, verse 6, and he made haste and came down and received him, and that's what important, joyfully. Like so many other Bible stories, Bible characters, Zacchaeus had heard about Jesus. Like blind Bartimaeus sitting by the roadside, Bartimaeus sat there every day begging, 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 begging. They didn't have any social network, didn't have any social safety nets. All he was, his entire life was based upon the generosity of a few pennies here or there. He hears that, that Jesus is coming. Matter of fact, Mark makes it clear in chapter 9 of Mark, and when he had heard that it was Jesus, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And the crowd said, shut up, uh, Bartimaeus. We don't have time for blind men. We don't have time for guys like you. We got important business, and we don't have time for you. But Jesus stopped, and he called him. And he said, what is it that you want that I might see, Lord? And Jesus healed him right there and then, and Bartimaeus followed him in the way. Now, what could Jesus have done there? He could have just passed on by and said, I don't want anything to do with that blind guy. He could have disparaged him and said, you twit, I don't have time for blind guys. But he didn't. He called him. Bartimaeus threw his coat away. His cloak or coat, he spread out before him every day and for people to throw money on. When he came to Jesus, he realized, man, I'm not going to need my coat anymore. The Bible expressly says he threw it away. Now, Jesus could have thrown him away. He's just an old blind beggar, man. She was just a woman that had an incurable disease and was dying. Or in the case of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, you come down, and here's what the Bible says, this dirty, rotten, no good, double-dealing, two-faced, four-flushing publican came down, and the Bible says that he received him joyfully. And then note what Zacchaeus says. It tells, it says this about him, and when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that's a sinner. Of all the things, Jesus is going to have dinner with a sinner. Zacchaeus comes down and said, 
unto the Lord. Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, that's what they did. They falsely accused you so they could extort money out of you. I restore him fourfold. See, something happened with Zacchaeus that day. He said, I'm going to give half, my, half of what I have to poor people. And if I have taken anything, if I lied about anybody, if I extorted money from anybody, if I was unjust to anybody, he said, I'm going to give that back to them fourfold. I'll tell you, brother, something happened with that guy. Zacchaeus, and Jesus said, now today is salvation come to this house. Now, just like Bartimaeus, just like the woman with the uh, incurable disease, Jesus could have looked up in the tree and saw Zacchaeus, that's another sinner. I don't have time for another sinner. I, a particularly a tax collector. They're the lowest of the low, the miserableness of the most miserable. And he didn't do that. He didn't throw him under the bus, didn't send him to the back of the line, didn't say, beat it, shorty. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, you come down. And the Pharisees, those religious hypocrites who had no time for Zacchaeus, said, wow. That guy's going to eat with sinners that were below sinners. They were publicans. And the Bible says that Zacchaeus received him joyfully into his house. We can spiritually kind of say that he received him into his life because immediately Zacchaeus said, I'm going to change my life, Lord. I'm going to do better. I'm not going to be a miserable crook anymore. I'm giving back half of what I've got to the poor. It wasn't mine anyway. I took it by false accusation, by extortion. I'm just going to give it to poor people. And he said, if I know of any man, specifically by name, that I have cheated, I'm going to restore to him fourfold. Wow. I'm glad... Jesus didn't throw Zacchaeus under the bus. I'm glad that he didn't say, I don't have time for you, pipsqueak. He said, come on down. I, I'm going over to your house today. And Zacchaeus gladly received him. Now, here's, here's our point. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't throw Zacchaeus away. And I'm so glad that Jesus didn't throw Jim Jenkins away. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't throw Doug Benedict away. I'm so glad that Jesus said, come on down. I'm going over to your house today. Look, he could have. He would have been within, can I use this word right, of throwing Zacchaeus away, of throwing Jim Jenkins away of throwing my father away. After all, we're just sinners. We're not the hoity-toity Pharisees, Sadducees. You remember in John chapter 9 when the blind man said to the Pharisees, will you believe on him? Will you hear it again? Will you believe on Jesus? And they said, dost thou presume to tell us and they threw him out of the prison, out of the temple. Huh. In the story of the Good Samaritan, the thing about that story is that the Pharisee and the, I forget who the other guy was, the Pharisee and the priest, I guess, I forget who the two first two were, they were coming down out of Jerusalem. They were coming down. They weren't in a hurry to go up to temple. They were just coming out, and they passed by the man that had been beaten and left half naked and severely wounded, ah, they threw him under the bus. He's just an old sinner, got beat up, probably got what was coming to him. And they passed by on the other side as they went down. They weren't in a hurry 
they just pass by. See, all of us are in the same boat. We're all sinners by nature, friend. I don't care what it is you've done. You say, well, I wasn't as bad as Zacchaeus. Really? Well, I wasn't as bad as that woman taken in adultery. I'm not that bad. Really? The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is nobody. There is nobody. You're listening to me today. Well, I'm not as bad as those guys are. You know what you are? You're a Pharisee. Because in Luke, Jesus talks about two men. The one was a Pharisee. He went up. He stood on the street corner. And he said, I'm so thankful I'm not like other men. I am not unjust. I'm not an adulterer. I'm not an extortioner. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all that I possess. And God, I thank you I'm not like that guy. Talking about the publican standing on the street corner who would not look up to heaven but smote himself on the breast and said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Somebody, oh, I'm not as bad a sinner as some of these. You're a Pharisee. That's what you are. Because we've all sinned. We all come short of the glory of God. But Jesus doesn't throw us under the bus, friend. It's like Zacchaeus. He says, come down. I'm coming over to your house today. He said, well, preacher, you don't know how many times I've messed up in my life. I don't need to know. Because you don't know how many times I messed up in my life. You don't need to know. I don't need to know about you. I know this that Jesus will take you just as you are. Yeah, but preacher, you don't know how many times I've messed up. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. Simon Peter said, depart from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. That's what I was, a sinful man. Jesus didn't pick me up, throw me under the bus. He said that song that we listened to this morning, and I bless the day, he did not throw the clay away. Friend, Jesus loves you. I don't care how many things you've messed up on in your life. I don't care how many bad things. Man, you say, well, I'm, I'm bad as Zacchaeus. Man, I'm a lying, no good, low down cheat like Zacchaeus was. Or I'm not that bad preacher, but I see that I'm a sinner. Friend, if you'll come to Christ just the way you are, and that, that is the only way you can come, just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. O Lamb of God, I come. I come. If you'll come to Jesus, he'll more than meet you halfway. He won't throw you away. To him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. Friend, why not come to Jesus today? Why not have salvation come to your house today? Trust him today, dear friend. Trust him as your Savior today, because listen to me. Tomorrow just might be too late. Friend, aren't you glad that Jesus didn't throw you away? Just think about all the times that y if you were God, would you have given up on yourself? Maybe you have. I know there was times where I thought, that's it. I'm done. Jesus is done with me. People are done with me. It's not going to get any better. But yet Jesus looks at us as just a piece of clay. We need to be formed in his image. So as preacher said, no matter what you have done, you are never too bad to come to know him as your savior. God will take you exactly how you are. So do you know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die? If you don't, why don't you give us a call today? Our phone number here is 315-348-6271. Or you can send an email to cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Why don't you come find out how God can use you and how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. 
Lord willing, we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.